Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Joshua chapter 9, verse 3, as well as Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Lord Jesus, you are so good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. So, Joshua chapter 9, verse 3. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai. All right. And so um, this is talking about the Gibeonite deception, right? So they they heard what happened and they were ready to come <laughs> and, and come up with a plan um, to stay alive, right? Gibeon was a big city. And so, uh, you know, they they decided, hey, Instead of trying to fight it out with the Hebrews, God is with them. Let's go over there and get under their covering. Let's try to see if we can get ourselves some sort of deal made. And so they deceived the children of Israel, but they were allowed to come in under the covering, right? So the Gibeonites in this way represent the um, Gentiles, right? The Gentiles who are coming in under the covering of the one true and living God. It wasn't by the way that it should have been done but somehow some way they they weaseled their way in and were able to be covered under the covering of the Israelites and we know this because um when they were attacked then Israel had to come and help save them um their city and so it says but when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua had done what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai. So that's when they came up with their deception. All right. And so um, the second verse that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter six, verse nine. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. Right. So this is talking about, um, the weeds and the thistles that are burnt up when they are useless, right? Um, it, some people um, are are not necessarily useful for the kingdom, right? They they show no evidence of their salvation. They truly didn't believe in what they they said they believed. Maybe they spoke in word, but they really didn't mean it in their heart, and they dried up quick, right? Or or that word didn't take place. Um, in their heart and those seeds that were planted were gobbled up by the birds, right? And that represents the enemy coming in and stealing the word. All right. And so he was talking about the, the people who were like those thistles to be burnt by the fire. And then he said, though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, and he's talking to the Hebrews, it says, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation, right? And so we know that Christ has brought us salvation as the Gentiles and the Jews. He has brought us salvation. He's made a way for us. He He incorporated us into his family, right? And so when we can play these two scriptures, when we're talking about a deception of Gibeonites, as well as a salvation, um, especially the way that he speaks of it here, though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved. <laughs> so so these, these people have come under under the covering of Israel. And that is, we know that our covering of Israel is Christ, right? And so he's saying that, yeah, everything ain't perfect, right? Everything's not perfect with us. Maybe, you know, you were saved under some sketchy circumstances. Maybe you made God some promises that you did not keep. Maybe, you know, some things didn't work out the way that you thought they would and you got away from God and then you did rededicated yourself or you fell down, you tripped and fell down. Remember, a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up again. You know, God sees us. He knows our hearts, right? It says, though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. You're listening to this because you are saved. You are listening to this because Christ is in your heart and he wants you to walk in a way that is upright before him with clean garments and to leave with his bride. That's why he's making you conscious of those things. So many people just choose not to listen. They, they choose to walk away from that. But in your case, beloved, 
the Lord is is talking to us. He's saying, hey, you aren't perfect. You come under a righteous covering. You you come under the covering of Jesus Christ. He is the, the true and living God. He is the God of Israel. And he is the God who can bring you into an inheritance just as if you were a son. So believe that. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Don't, don't, don't turn away from God in fear that, you know, you are not going to get things perfect. So might as well just walk in that way of, Hey, you know, I'm just going to do my own thing and God's going to save me. No, you continue to walk with the Lord and, and God is going to do the rest, right? You continue to keep walking with your hand toward the plow and you put the enemy to flight by your actions of continuing to serve the Lord. He's going to stop deceiving you into thinking that you are not of him. He, you are of God, right? In your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. I like um, verse 10 It's around verse 10 or 11. And it talks about, you know, God is not a God who's going to forget all the things that you've done. He's not a God who's going to just, you know, forget about um, you serving him. He's a just God and he's a loving God. He, he doesn't just remember all the bad things. We pray that he does not count our sins against us, right? We're going to be judged by the law of freedom and not in judgment, right? All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for showing us that it is not our perfection that will cause us to escape. It's our trusting in you, Lord God. It's coming under your covering. It's coming under your grace. We love you. We know that you are soon to come. The seconds are ticking away and we put our trust in you, Lord God. Forgive us for all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer with me and you believe it, then the Holy Spirit has come into your heart and saved you until the day of redemption, sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth meaning he's going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.